Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C++. And today we're going to be discussing, well, functions with parameters. And that's all we're going to do, so hopefully this won't be too long. So, first of all, before I get into parameters, let's uh, review on how to create a simple function that does not have parameters. So, let's do another welcome message like before. So, it's not going to return anything, so it's void. And I'll have it say print message. And that's it. Then below it, we type out the, the title of it, so print message, and what it does. Prints a welcoming message for the user. Uh, welcoming, okay. Making sure I spell everything right. And that's it. doesn't return anything, so let's go down here and type the same thing. So, void print message. But this time, instead of a semicolon, we put our curly braces down here. And we'll have a C out. And we'll have it say, hmm. Oh, yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Oh, with the parameters, you know what? Okay, that's a good idea. Okay, I just came up with a really, really good idea here. It'll be called math operations. So this is this would be a really good one for showing you how to use parameters. Oh, I'm really excited now. I got a good idea right off the top of my head. Okay, so this is, okay, so we're going to have a message that prints. So let's uh, call it, so print message. And I'll click save, and let's run this. Math operations. Okay, so now I'm really excited because I came up with a good idea. Okay, so now we're going to want to actually learn how to pass parameters into this. So in the last tutorial, you might have remembered that we uh, declared two variables inside of a function and then multiplied those two values and returned that product. Well, sometimes you might want to actually declare variables in your main function and pass them in as parameters into your functions in here. So why would you want to even do that? I mean, wouldn't that be kind of, you know, can't we just declare them in here? Well, the reason why you, you might do that is because you might want to pass them into multiple functions. And you don't want to declare um, multiple functions in here like this uh, because it won't be visible in others. And that's, you know what, that's another thing I should go over, and that's a variable scope. Uh, any variables that you create within a function has what's called local scope. So if I create an int x equals 5 up here or something like that, and then up here I type in, maybe I want to you know, type in x equals 10 or something, um, I'm going to get an error that says x is undefined. Well, why is it undefined? x is after the print message that's called, and we set x equal to something. But since it's within this function, it's private. It can't be seen outside of this function. So that's called local scope. And any uh, any variables that you create outside all your functions uh, have global scope. Now we don't typically, so I could go in x equals 5 or something like that and get rid of this one right here. Uh, now notice how the error went away because since it's outside all the functions, it has global scope, so all the functions can read this x. But as you might have remembered, in, when we were learning about constants, never do that. Uh, constants should be the only variables, well, they're not variables because they're constant, that should be declared outside. So um, for global scope, only your constants should be out here. All your variables inside your functions will have local scope. So that's something you should remember. But anyways, if, y if you have any variables that you want to do multiple things with it in you know multiple functions, uh, you won't want to have to redeclare them inside all your functions because those are going to all be different variables that take up memory. So that's not a good thing because that's going to build up memory and your application will be huge. So we could just make them in our main function instead and then pass them in as parameters. So down here, let's create an int called x. And now I'll call it num1. And I'll put a comma, then num2. I don't think you've ever seen me do this before, where I put a comma so you can declare more than one integer at the same time. But anyways, so that's a pretty cool little thing I can show you there. Anyways, let's see out some stuff. Let's have it say, type into integers, colon, and let's see in both num1 and num2. I really like what I'm doing here, because I'm showing you some different ways of typing out code, uh, opposed to what you're probably used to. Uh, but anyways, so yeah, so now we are going to be prompted to type in two integers after our print message. The print message will come first, then we're going to type in our two integers, and let's actually pass them into a function. 
So the first function we're going to want to create is, let's call it addition. So are we going to actually return addition? Well, I guess we could, couldn't we? So, you know what, we're not. Let's call it a void. And there's a reason why. So I'll have it say, add nums. Something like that. So now there's two parameters that we're going to have to, or no, wait. Yeah, two parameters. We're going to have to pass in both num1 and num2. And they're both integers. So we're going to have to create two parameters in here. Now when you're declaring your function, you don't have to actually name them up here. You can just put the two data types that we'll be putting in. And that's two ints. So now down here, we're going to call it add nums. And what's it going to do? Add two integers. That's it. Now we're going to have to actually specify the two parameters that we're going to have to put in. So we'll type in at param, which is short for parameter, the data type, then a dash, then define what that integer is. I'll just put in first number to be multiplied, or no, added. We're not doing multiplication yet. Added. Oh, goodness. There we go. And then we'll have another one, at param int second number to be ah, no added. So I'm thinking about the last tutorial. So that's all it does, and it doesn't return anything, so you don't do any returns or anything like that. So we have the title of it, and then pretty much a definition of what it does, what the purpose of it is, and a definition basically for the two parameters that we have here. So, uh, notice how we only have to put the data types here, but when we go down here, so I'll, I'll put out void, and what, what would we call it? Add nums. This time, we're going to have to actually give names to those parameters. So we had int and int, but this time we have to actually give them names. Now, do they have to be the same uh, name of, as what we'll be passing in up here? No. So I can just call them as simply x and y, even though, again, you shouldn't use verbals that are as vague as this, but uh, I just want to show you that you don't have to do this. So, blah, 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 blah. we have int x and int y, so basically we're going to be adding them together. So we'll just go x plus y. But I want to actually show you something uh, in a bit. I actually want to call another function to print this. So I'm actually going to be calling a function within this function. Uh, so I want to go back up here and actually learn how to print this. So I want to put out void print result. There we go. And what this would be called is print result. I know you're probably super confused, but don't worry. Prints whatever is passed in as a parameter. And we're just going to be putting in one int. And at param int the number to be printed. There we go. So now we're going to have to, I'll just uh, copy this, I guess. I can just copy this. There's no reason why I put this one above the add nums, but don't worry. And I'm kind of showing you two things at once. This is really complicated, but don't worry. It, it, shouldn't, be, it shouldn't be bad. So int total. There we go. Okay, so now let's look at this. So I have add nums in print result. So first of all, all the add nums is going to do is add x plus y. But what I want the print to do is to actually print whatever the total is. So what I'm going to be doing is actually calling the print function from the add nums. So all you do is type out print results as such. And whoops, there we go. And print results, or print result, excuse me. And we're going to have to actually type in our parameter. So the integer we're going to be putting there is x plus y. So x plus y. And this will act as one parameter right here because we don't have any commas separating separate parameters. So x plus y will just equal, you know, just one number, whatever x and y is. And it's going to, you know, pass it into our print result. Then here we put in c out. And we'll have it say something like total. And then whatever we pass in, so total. So this x plus y will now be equal to this total. And then we're going to print that total. 
So let me go back up here and actually call our add nums. So I'll type in add nums as such, and this is a void function, remember. So I don't have to actually type anything in. And then all I have to do is put in num1 as a parameter and num2 as a parameter. So let's actually save this and run this. I know this is probably super confusing, but I'll explain everything, don't worry. So math operations, type in two integers, I'll put in six and eight. And now you get total is 14. So let me explain this. Um, I know this is probably confusing, but I, th I think I can explain this. So we created this to these two, um, excuse me, integers here, num1 and num2. We were prompted to type in two integers, and we did num1 and num2. So I put in six and eight. Then we called our add nums. Since it's a void function, all we had to do was just type it in as is. And we passed in the two numbers that we typed in here, 6 and 8, as parameters. Then our corresponding variables that we put in here, remember, they don't have to be the same name. Notice how I didn't put this as num1 and as num2. I just, said that I just called them x and y. Would now be equal to whatever we passed in. But remember, they must be the same data types. These are both integers, and these are both integers. You cannot cross a... Uh, Unless you're using like static cast or something, you cannot cross between data uh, data types. So bear that in mind. So we went into our add nums, and we pass in these as parameters, and then we called another function called print result. So now it's going to look for something called print result, and here it is. And what it did was it passed in x plus y, what we passed in here as one number. Remember. The reason why this is only one parameter is because we didn't put a comma in here. Remember, commas separate your parameters. So this is gonna, this is going to act as only one parameter, one integer that is x plus y, the sum basically. Then the print result is going to take that total, that x plus y, and then it's going to print it down here. So now total is going to be equal to the x plus y. So this is pretty much how we're going to be structuring our functions. I know this was really um, confusing. Actually, I'm sure it probably wasn't. This probably wasn't that bad. So, you know what? Let me make another one. So, let's make one that actually subtracts now. So, I'll go down here and I'd like to do this again just so you could see some more. So, sub nums. So, we'll be throwing in two different integers and it'll be called sub nums. And what she, so subtract two integers. And here we go. So at param. So our first integer is, well, the, f the, I call it the base number. And param int. Um, number to be subtracted from first number. I don't know. And let's, let's, let's just copy and paste this this time. So I'll just copy and I'll squeeze it in right here. So I'll paste. But this, but now we need to give names to these again. I'll, call, I'll just call them X and Y again. And okay, so now we'll have to actually do something. Let's call print result again. And this time let's put in x minus y and now we have to actually call our sub nums and throw num1 in and num2 there we go so let's see if this works so I'll throw in 8 and 14 and now we get 8 plus 14 is 22 and 8 minus 14 is negative 6 so it pretty much worked out the same way so I hope this tutorial wasn't too confusing. I really jumped the gun by calling a function within a function like this. So that was that was pretty ju much jumping the gun because I, I I should have just printed this inside here. I should not have I should have not have done this at all. I, I I really shouldn't. I shouldn't have jumped the gun like I did. But typically functions shouldn't do more than one thing. So hopefully this wasn't too confusing. Like you know in here I could have just put you know c out you know, x plus y like this. Something like that. So, you know, I could have just done it like that. And actually, I could have done it like this. Some... Let's see how that looks. Uh, alternate F5. So I'll put in like 4 and 6. 
and see, I put in four and six, and now I actually printed some ten. So, and then it called it, so the ten came in back again. But, so I should have showed it to you like this, but I kind of jumped the gun. But hopefully this wasn't confusing for you. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. Please make sure you do all your function declarations up here, and then you do all your function definitions down here. So I'll s And look how clean our main function. You see how few stuff is in our main function? This is clean. This is how your main function should look. But anyways, again, I really hope this tutorial was helpful for you, and I'll see you next time.